What's up, YouTube? This is Derek T, and you're gold winging with me again. This is now the fifth episode of the audio upgrades, and I believe this will be the last of them. Anyway, I told you it was going to be a couple days before some parts started coming in, so battery showed up today, and the four gauge wire showed up today, and the kill switch showed up today. Circuit breaker. So I promised I was going to get the bike torn apart so I'm gonna take you down to the torn apart bike right now and show you the beginning of the process let's get at it All right, YouTube, I'm back. I told you this process was going to take a couple days to get done, but I'm actually, for as ripped apart as all of this looks, I'm actually ahead of schedule because I wasn't expecting the amp to come in, the new amp to come in before tomorrow, and a guy from Amazon knocked on the door with it today. So I'm actually a little bit ahead of schedule. Let me show you what I have so far. Um, this is, again, a little bit of a cleaner look coming off of the battery. The only two things that are on here now are the four gauge wire. Here's the positive, here's the negative. The only other things going there are the battery tether. That's it, positive and negative, and that's it. And so it's a lot cleaner on the battery now. Um, and I don't have all of that draw coming off of this, which is the crank battery, all right? And what we did was we ran this four gauge wire into the saddle bag. I didn't have to, the nice thing was I didn't have to cut any additional holes because the air hose hole was actually enough for me to be able to squeeze those other two wires into there where the air hose is at as well, which I'm actually hiding behind here. So if I ever need to get to the air compressor, I can. The uh, battery is not mounted down, but by the time I put my tool kit in here and mount the amp where it's going to go, this is not going to move. Um, there is an inline circuit breaker that's here. All right, so that can turn off and on and um, I can have power going from the main battery there. Uh, the way that this whole setup works is pretty much the alternator, uh, you know anything about the alternator, um, will keep the crank battery charged while the bike is running. It works to charge this battery. The crank battery will in turn make sure that this stays charged. And if I ever am concerned about that, I can kill the power to it right here um, but I can also run my electronics off of this battery while the bike is not in use too which is pretty cool if I want to be sitting somewhere and playing some music all right um, this is the amplifier all right um, and I'll put a picture a link to it on your screen as well this is the Soundstream Picasso Nano, recommended to me by one of the pros who knows what he's doing. And so, um, you see I already ran the power in the ground. All I have to do is attach those to the battery and we're cooking with grease. And so, um, all of this, all of these, I mean, it looks like spaghetti, but it'll come together pretty easily. I'm gonna have to put a couple extensions on a couple of those speaker wires just to get it. Um, because this, because of the shape of this amplifier and the shape of the last amplifier, I'm gonna need a little bit more length on a few of these to get down to where the amplifier is going to be. I have a ground loop isolator here and also another one in the front near the head unit. But uh, for all four of those channels, 
So for if you've ever experienced that whining sound that comes when you hit your throttle and you get a whining sound through your speakers, you probably need a ground loop isolator and that will kill that noise. Alrighty, so he's pretty torn apart here, but it's gonna come back together really nicely. This is what's happened so far. And like I said, I'll be back with you once we get the amp hooked up. I'll show you um, how I ran those wires. What you're looking at is the, not the final product, but pretty close to it. Um, everything is operational and it's operating exactly the way I explained it in the fourth episode in terms of the new electrical system. So what we have here is our secondary battery and um, it's got its four gauge wires, positive and negative, run into the main crank battery, which is behind the side cover. Um, the bike is pretty much put together because I'm getting ready to ride with a few friends. Um, let's see, the circuit breaker, if we can get in there, is right here, okay? And basically, getting power from the crank battery, and now I'm not. So that's uh, killing the draw that was on the battery from before, which is a good thing. Um, here is the SoundStream amplifier. I still have some wiring of speakers to do there. Everything does work, but I have to go back and uh, make a few minor adjustments. Um, I didn't mount the amp. I didn't drill any holes to mount the amp. It's sitting right here on top of my toolbox. And my toolbox, um, like I said, is just giving a little bit of elevation. But when I put everything back in here, um, it pretty much stays wedged in one position and nothing is going to slide around. <sighs> so that's actually a good thing. I am going to go back and clean up the wires. I know this uh, is not going to win any style points as far as wiring is concerned. But then again, I've kind of given a designation of the utility closet to this particular saddle bag. So when I'm riding down the street, nobody's going to be looking in here anyway, but everybody will hear what it sounds like over here. I got a little light. So if I need to do some work over there and that light's not wired to anything, it's completely battery operated. So I'm not drawing on anything other than the nine volt battery that's in it. So that's what we have. Um, I have the head unit, the subwoofer and the amplifier running to this battery. All right, YouTube, the other thing that I did was with my LED lights, let me get my phone out of the way. With the LED lights, I ran those to this fuse box here. So now, let me just throw the key in the ignition really quickly. When if I turn the accessory mode on, you can see that the lights are running off of that fuse box now, which um, is pretty cool. And again, it takes the draw away from um, just having them connected to the battery all the time and having it drawing from the battery all the time. So that's another uh, real quick fix that I made. Like I said, the, the two LED light strips, I just ran them right here to the fuse box. So that's what we have. I've also put probably about 100 to 150 miles on the bike since getting all of this installed and I haven't had nearly as much heat coming off of the alternator as I have in weeks and months past. So I really do believe that this situation has solved the problem, but like I said, not really getting any style points for <laughs> what all of this looks like. So you have to kind of look past that for right now. And one day when I'm really in a mood, I'll get in here and clean these wires up. So here's how everything sounds after putting the bike back together. Yeah, it's a 
pretty good sound for being so far away from it. So there you have it. By the way, the music that I used is uncopyrighted, so we should be okay uh, from the music police. Anyway, that's uh, the sound system. Uh, sounding good. Uh, doesn't have to look good because it's hidden in a saddlebag. <laughs> uh, I'll talk to you all later. You all take care.